Welcome to Little Hill Comics. This is the Playgroup Mead series. We have made together a character from DC and Marvel to have a look at what we can do with the playbooks with Masks the New Generation. This video we will be looking at the Beacon. The drama of the Beacon is that they are the underdog. They are surrounded by friends who have a lot full of powers and more useful than them. They are the everyman. You're just a person and everything around you is where well you're league. But you're trying anyway. I am going for weird ones for this match. From DC, I am going with Wonder Woman, but not just any version of Wonder Woman. First movie with Gail Gadot, where she is leaving the island and going to man's world. And yeah, there's things she does not like, but she is also eager to throw herself into the war to meet this man, this mythical being that she's only heard about in tales, to eat ice cream. That is the beacon in Wonder Woman. And for Marvel, I am going with Hank Pym, who you may know from the panel where he is hitting his way. I found the story that's from Very Beacon. Hank was rejoining the Avengers and he has been messing up time after time, feeling useless. All the other Avengers are cool. His wife is not just a cool superhero, but rich and successful in her own field. And this was the golden age. From what I understand, the story was meant to be sympathetic towards Hank, being such a pathetic loser. And the panel with the assault was not meant to be written that way or drawn that way. It was meant to be over-exaggerated hand movements that hit her by accident. And the fact that in the real world, that stuck as abuse and has lingered with the character to now is very beacon. Enough about the hats. This character, Diana Henry, is Wonder Ant. And she will become a member of the Bugs of Prey. For Wonder Ant, I want her to be a trans girl because that way we have our symbol of feminism, including trans women. And she will also be carrying a lot of baggage for masculine toxicity from both sides of the equation, which will play into some of the Henry Pym stuff. Seeing someone who always felt like she was the last to be picked, and now she is seeing this world of superheroes, which she can be a part of, and she is determined to make that happen. We have our beacon. The beacon, in theory, is one of the two playbooks that the abilities matter. In theory, the beacon should have no or low power set and rely on skills. More of your Batman, Green Arrow, Hawkeye, Black Widow rather than your Superman, Scarlet Witch types. That isn't always the case. Kitty Pride, Iceman, Sazam, The Flash, Captain America could all be beacons. It is more about the drama of being the underdog. So, in my opinion, Batman and Iron Man cannot be beacons because they are going to feel second to no one. Never mind the last to be picked. With Diana Henry, 
we are going with sword fighting, which is a skill which you could learn, probably lapping as an Amazon, and shrinking. Shrinking seems like the perfect vegan drama move. They don't just feel small, they get small. And especially with a character like Diana Henry, if we are playing into the sexism and transphobia, there is more reason that that character has felt small in their life. And more reason for that character to want to feel big. The beacon extra are tribes. It is basically a bucket list of things your beacon wants to do. You have a list of 20 things. You pick four things that your kite is going to be focused on right now. You tick them off if it happens. You get a benefit from that. And once you get rid of the four, you pick a new four. And then rinse and repeat. If you complete your list, you change playbooks. The beacon is no longer chasing the thrill. They have other issues to focus on. As a player, I recommend considering what you're up to where you are in the length of the game when you're picking your decisions. Play. If the GM is hinting that you might be going to space soon, then you might want to pick the drives about giving an unusual vehicle or going to an interesting place or time. If it's the beginning of a campaign, you probably don't want to pick the long-term goals like change your costume, change your name, because that feels like it needs some setup before you can buy it off. If you are running a long good game where you feel like you have the time to set these things up and then strike them off, that is a choice that you can make with the knowledge of how long you expect the game to go. But my general recommendation is picking things that you have a chance to get do not pick break up with someone when your character has not seen someone. Unless you're trying to angle that as, I am breaking up with this friend. But take that with a grain of salt. I usually run shorter campaigns. I have run a game with a beacon going through a set of four every session. That was a version of Harley Quinn who was extremely manic, and the drives only help to show that. So if you are going for a fast, hit them off as quick as you can. Be prepared for your character to seem eccentric. Diana Henry wouldn't be that eccentric. She would be embracing life being a superhero and all the chances that she gets being a superhero and being a part of this team. She would probably go through drives pretty fast, but not Harley Quinn fast. But the Harley Quinn method or the slow method is still equally valid. The GM principles are draw attention to their inaccuracies. Praise their best traits. Make them pay for their audacity. Compare them to others and play to their drives. Look on that play to their drives first. I think it's part of my job as a GM to know the drives my beacon has picked and to try to give them some set up to this. The job is not all on me, but it shouldn't be all on them either. If they have picked go to a fantastical place or time, give them a chance to go to a fantastical place or time. Don't keep them locked up somewhere. 
don't run five sessions in school where they can't get out. Unless, of course, there's a portal in the basement that goes to the fairy world. They draw the attention to their inaccuracies, make them play for their audacity and compare them to others. It's all part of the underdog story, giving them consequences to their actions and making sure you show how cool the team is compared to them. That is not pushing your player to the sidelines. Give your player something to do, but also reinforce that belief the rest of the team is cooler. It is a difficult balancing act. And one of the best ways that I have found is when a beacon have missed a roll, you ask one of the other teammates, you see the beacon fumble, how do you fix it? And you let them auto succeed. But don't overuse it because then your beacon's like, why am I even here? And lastly, praise their best traits. This is giving them the moments to shine and letting them live the dream. Having an adult hero tell them how great they are. Having a love interest tell them how great they are. But it's not just general greatness. It is about why they are special in their own way. You can have an NPC adult to say that Wonder Ant is terrible with her sword and then say that they would never go out of it without her leadership, her out-of-the-box thinking and her compassion. If there's a way to praise the Beacon's personality, try to go for that. And I hope this is inspirational and useful to at least someone out there.